is up everybody? My name is Cameron. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of flounder fishing in Galveston Bay. The season for flounder fishing closes in like three or four days. So we're trying to get a couple last minute flounder to throw in the freezer. But before we get into it, I do want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Carbonox. So Carbonox is a company that specializes in making extremely durable smartwatches for outdoorsmen like myself and like I'm sure many of you are, and also for hardworking people really just putting their gear to the test every single day and putting a beating on their equipment. So we're going to talk more on them in just a little bit and I'll go over all the cool features of this watch and my personal experience as I've been wearing this thing for about three or four weeks now. But for now, let's go ahead and get into fishing and see if we can catch some flounder to take home. The first flounder spot of the morning and it's just all these boat docks right here along the channel. So all I'm doing is I'm taking a one fourth ounce jig head. I have some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Not too much here just because I actually just caught a flounder off camera. I'll show you him right now. Right in that cooler. I don't know if you can see him or not. He swallowed the hook so I had to cut off and retie but we got enough. All I'm doing is taking a little white gulp with a chartreuse tail. The shrimp gulp. I'm just hooking that on this jig head just like that. These things have pretty much no action at all. They're basically just a stick bait. And then we're just skipping them under these docks, just like that. And those flounder, in theory, should be all up around these pilings. So we're gonna see if we can catch any more. And the way I'm working this lure is I'm just letting it sink down to the bottom, which doesn't take long because it's not too deep here. And then I'm just bouncing it just like that. Little twitches of the rod. A lot of people drag them like that. Some people work it faster like you're fishing for trout or something but I just like to do a little bounce on bottom just hopping it and skipping it along okay I got another one here y'all I just turned off the camera and then this guy bit it but he didn't bite like a normal flounder usually a flounder is gonna come up grab your bait sink back down to the bottom and just lay there with it and you can drag him along but this guy actually bit it and started swimming so I didn't have time to turn the camera back on but there we go Flounder number two of the morning. Actually my third one because I caught a small undersized right when we pulled up. We're gonna get this little guy unhooked and get him tossed back. Oop, he unhooked himself. Bottom of the boat, he's flapping around. As soon as we are found ourselves a little hot spot. Usually, whenever you pull up to these docks, some docks are gonna be better than others. Sometimes you'll catch five or six under the same dock and then other docks have none on them. So when you find one that has some fish, it's always good to keep casting because they don't always eat it on the first cast. Always casting the same spot two or three times. So I got a little one here, guys. Yep, thought he let go for me. It's a tiny guy. Oh, he came off. It's okay, quick release, but there we go. Okay, well, the flounder fishing is kind of slow right now. I caught those three or four flounder, but only one keeper, and then they're just really scattered. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up, we're gonna run down a little bit. We're gonna go see if we can find ourselves some trout, redfish, sheep's head, mango snapper, really whatever. We got some live shrimp, so. Let's go ahead and head down the channel and see what else we can get into. So we've actually pulled back up to the flounder spot here. It was slow fishing everywhere else and I believe I have one here. So we're gonna set the hook. And I do. It doesn't feel like a keeper, but you never know until they get to the top. All right, just a little guy. But well, there we go. Flounder number five of the day for me, or four of the day. Only one keeper still. But it's a good sign when you're catching these little guys because that means that the run is starting to happen. The little males are already moving out. And this is a little male right here probably. So we're gonna get them on hook and get them released. I think I got myself a little flounder here. Dude. Just a little guy. They're here, just no keepers. We have that one keeper in the box, but that's the only one all day. And we've seen a bunch of other little ones get caught by all these other boats. Pretty crowded today. There's a ton of boats pulled in all in these docks and everyone's just catching the undersized ones. So let's get this kind of hook, toss them back, and maybe we'll get lucky and see if we can catch a 15 and a half. I think we got one here, yo. Oh, he's got me around the pole. And he's pulling drag. Get out from that pole. Oh, he's towards us. There he is. Another little guy. Pretty much repeating the same thing over and over again. Let's go ahead and get this guy unhooked and try to catch another.
Yet again, another little one. It seems like they just started biting because we pulled in here. We didn't catch anything for quite a while. And then I just got like four or five within 20 minutes. So looks like they started biting. Hopefully we'll get into some, a couple keepers. But if not, then we might move down and try a couple different dogs. Let's unhook this guy though. All right, y'all. Well, it is 12:27 right now. We are officially done flounder fishing for the day. We only got that one keeper, but I did catch nine undersized ones. Actually, eight undersized ones, and then the one keeper. So, um, and then my dad also caught two himself. So, total on the day, we are up to 11 flounder. I wish I could have hit that 10, but unfortunately, we got stopped one short, and the fishing has just kind of died out. So. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna head to one more spot, see if we can pick up some redfish or maybe trout or sheep's head or something like that. And then we're gonna head back to the boat ramp. So y'all make sure to stay tuned because we are gonna be doing a catch and cook on that one keeper flounder. With that being said, let's head to the last spot and see if we can catch a couple more fish to take home. But if not, we'll see y'all back at the boat ramp. Well, we are back at the house and we are about to clean up this one keeper flounder right here for the catch and cook part of the video. But before we get into that, I wanna tell y'all a few of the awesome things that I've noticed about my Carbonox watch, as well as go over some of the really cool features on it because it's absolutely loaded with them. So I've had this watch for about three weeks right now. And the first thing that really stood out to me is how long the battery life lasts. I've been wearing this thing for about a week straight and it's still at 30%. It says the battery lasts for up to 10 days and that is definitely true. And the cool thing is it only takes like two hours to get a full charge. So once every week or once every week and a half, I'll throw it on the charger and two hours later, I'm ready to go again. And I don't have to worry about it for quite a while. I'm gonna go ahead and roll some clips showing you all the different features on this thing, as well as a couple of different settings you can mess with and just all the cool little gadgets that come with it. And then we'll see y'all right back here at the flay table to finish up this flounder. So some of the awesome capabilities of this watch is that you can use it to check the weather. You can also check your heart rate as well as check your blood oxygen. I also like how customizable it is. Right here, I'm just going through a couple of the different faces that it has built into it. So if you ever get bored of one, you can change it up and have something new to look at. It also counts your steps every day as well as your calories that you're burning. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, these watches are extremely durable. They're made from some of the highest quality materials in the industry. We literally ran it over with the car and it did zero damage at all. And another thing that is crucial for a fisherman like myself is that these watches are waterproof. So I never have to worry about it getting wet whenever I'm cleaning the boat, as you can see here, or whenever I'm wade fishing and I'm constantly having that salt water splash all over. So I've done stuffed flounder a hundred times. I've flayed the flounder out a hundred times and I wanna show you all a little something different today. So today we're gonna be doing a whole baked flounder, kind of like you would a whole fried flounder, but instead of frying it, we're just gonna be baking in the oven, which is super simple and a lot less cleanup, to be honest. So what we're gonna start off by doing is taking a descaler right here and we're just gonna run it against the scales in the opposite direction that they go and knock all of them off. You could use a spoon, you could use the back of your knife, but these things are only about $1.50 or $2 at Academy and they work great, super fast and can't really mess it up with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this thing up, the front side and the back side, and then we'll see y'all for the next step. So we got all the scales knocked off the flounder. Now all we're gonna do is just take it and we're just gonna cut the head off and pull out the guts. So we're just gonna run our knife right here, down, crush through some bones. We're just gonna go out a line all the way down. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and just make our lines connect. And then really simple guys, all we do is we just take it, twist the head and pull it right out. And everything comes out with it. The next thing we are going to do and the last thing we are going to do is just score it up. Just take our knife and run it across just like that at an angle about an inch apart all the way down the fish. We're not cutting through the backbone or anything. We're just making nice lines on it. And then we're gonna turn our fish and we're gonna cut the other way. So we have little cubes. So there's two reasons that we're doing this. One of the reasons is so the fish cooks evenly and also cooks a little bit quicker because more of that meat is exposed. And then the other reason is so we can get all of our seasonings into each little crack on this fish and completely coat the fish and get that good flavor all throughout it. Do the same thing on the other side. And there we go, y'all. That is a completely done flounder, ready to go in the oven. So let's go ahead and head inside, season this thing up, and then get to cooking it. Okay, so super simple baked flounder. So we have our cleaned up flounder that we just did outside. Obviously, y'all saw that whole entire process. And now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some oil, pour it in our bowl right here, quite a bit, just like that, enough to cover the whole fish a few times over. And then we're gonna take some seasoning, 
This is some white wine and garlic butter seasoning. Like always, you can use whatever you want. If you wanna do Cajun seasoning, if you wanna do lemon pepper, if you wanna do Italian seasoning, go for it. I just found this in the pantry and I thought this would be really good. So white wine and lemon butter, we're gonna add a whole bunch of that to the oil. A couple tablespoons. And then we're also gonna add some Italian. A couple tablespoons of that. And we're trying to make just a paste right here, kind of. Or some seasoned oil, I guess. We're gonna stir this around really good. Y'all look at that. That's what we're looking for. So once we have that mixed together, the next step is to just pour over our fish. So we're going to take our fish, and what I like to do is I like to bend it like this when I do this. And the reason I do that is so all the flavor gets in the cracks, because that's the whole reason we scored it, so all the flavor would get in there. So we're gonna bend it, pour some over. Man, it looks like pesto coming out. This is a completely new recipe for me. I've never made this. I've actually never done a whole baked flounder. I definitely have never done it with this seasoning, but there we go, just like that. Flip it over, same thing to the other side. We're just gonna make sure we get the whole fish coated in that delicious seasoning. And then pour all the rest right over top. Just like that. And the very last thing we're gonna do before it goes in the oven is lay some fresh lemon wedges over the top. A few there, boom and boom. That should be good. So let's go ahead and put this in. We have the oven set at 375. We're gonna put it on the top rack and start out with about 15 minutes. It might take anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes to cook depending on the size of the flounder, the thickness of those fillets. Y'all know how it is, but we'll start with 15 and see what it looks like. Well, the timer went off and I went ahead and restarted it for an additional 15 minutes. So we did 30 minutes total in the oven. And I finished it off with one minute of broiling so we can get it real crispy. And there we go, y'all check that out. That looks perfect. We're gonna let that cool down, then we're gonna plate it up and tell you exactly how good it tastes. We have our flounder plated up right here, and y'all check that out. That is a good looking plate. This looks like something you get out of a restaurant. Let's go ahead and try it out. So we got some green beans on the side, a little bit of fresh lemon right here, and then our very seasoned fish. Look at the skin. It's just absolutely coated in that oil and seasoning mixture. Drop some fresh lemon on there. And let's go in for it. Piece right out of the middle, that's always the best one. Perfectly cooked, super white, super flaky. Look at that, look at the steam coming off of there. That looks great. Let's go ahead and try it out. Cheers, y'all. That is an absolute winner. Whenever I think of baked fish, I always think of just a super plain, not really appetizing recipe. For how good this thing is, you would never imagine it was this easy to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and give some to my family, let everyone try it out, and we're gonna finish this flounder off. But I wanna say thank you guys so much for watching. Go out right now, catch yourself a flounder. The season is about to close from November 1st through December 15th, but you still have a few days and they are out there. It's just a bunch of small ones right now with a few keepers mixed in. But if you put in the time, you'll definitely find a couple to bring home. Once again, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. If you are, like always guys, I thank you so very much. That's it for right now, but got a ton of more videos on the way, so we'll see you on the next one. Until then, peace.